Well, this week brings us to Thanksgiving. Have you ever considered how many ways we use the expression thank you? There are many, but please consider this progression. Pay particular attention to the idea of a sense of obligation. First, we use it as a social lubricant. When you make a purchase and the clerk hands you your change, you say thank you. Now the clerk actually owes you the money. Both of you expect that she will give it to you, and in fact, you're getting exactly what you deserve. Still, you say thank you. It's a social courtesy, a way of acknowledging that you're satisfied with the transaction. There is, however, no sense of obligation. Now consider a little different case. The, the salesman at a car dealership also says thank you when you purchase your new car. Again, there is an exchange of value. Again, you're getting what you paid for and the dealership is getting his money. But the salesman knows you did not have to purchase the car at that particular dealership. Thank you means that he knows that you had a choice and made it in his favor. The two sides are still equal in money, but still there's no, there's a little more sense of obligation. Thanksgiving, as originally celebrated, extends this concept. God is under no obligation to the farmer to provide rain at the right time or to protect from hail and the elements. The farmer depends upon the elements. The pilgrims felt that God had done them a favor he had been gracious to them. True, they had worked the soil and planted the crops, but having put the seed in the ground, they depended on God for the growth. The sense of obligation is much deeper now. There is a much greater case, however, which we celebrate at communion. God was not only under no obligation to send his son to the cross, he had every good reason not to. We were and still are sinners. He is a just and righteous God. He owes us nothing. We borrow the very idea of existence from him. Yet, while still sinners, Christ came and became our sacrifice for sin that we might become the children of God. Thankfulness varies by two things, the size of the favor and the extent to which we deserve it. The favor in this case is eternal life and cleansing from sin. What greater favor could be bestowed? The extent to which we deserve it? Not at all. We don't deserve it at all. So then, as we take communion, we should do so with a thankful spirit, knowing that we did not get what we deserved. We got his love instead. Would you bow with me? Father in heaven, we're thankful for this time that we could come and worship you and at this time father we ask that you would be with us as we partake of the bread father help turn our minds back to the cross and the great sacrifice that was made for us that we might take this in a manner that would be pleasing in your sight in christ's name we pray amen
Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your bread of life that you gave us and you spilled your blood in sacrifice for us, your life that you gave up for us. Let us take this in a manner which would be pleasing to you, your, this, this blood, this emblem that represents your spilled blood, Lord, in your name, Jesus' name, amen. We'll be singing, He Has Made Me Glad. <clears throat> Russell's lesson this morning, um, I am a sheep. And after this, um, we'll be having the scripture this morning. I am a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd. Watching over my soul, my soul to keep guarding over me ever, watching wherever. 
scripture this morning uh, will be found in Psalm. It'll be chapter 100, the entire chapter. Psalm chapter 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Good morning. I want to welcome everybody this morning. What a beautiful Lord's Day and... We want to welcome our guest. Uh, we're blessed to have you with us today, and we hope that you uh, feel welcome with the body that meets here in Mullenville. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, Psalm 100, and whichever translation you have, if you'll notice at the top of Psalm 100, it'll have a title there of a psalm for Thanksgiving, or the NIV says, a psalm for giving thanks. It's one of the unique psalms in the Hebrew Bible that has a title. And, you know, in, in a lot of chapters where the translators, they put headings at the top of the chapter, but this is one in the original Hebrew text that there is a title. And it is a psalm of thanksgiving, a psalm uh, for giving thanks. And so we're going to look at Psalm 100 uh, this morning together. Have you ever wondered why we have been instructed to worship God? What spirit or attitude should prevail when we are worshiping God? Why should we worship God? Well, Psalm 100 gives us some insight to those questions. And I want us to see this morning first with the spirit and attitude that ought to prevail when we worship as an assembly together. I want us to see first this morning that we should worship God with joyful hearts, filled with thanksgiving and praise. 
if we see anything from this text, we see this of worshiping God with joyful hearts, filled with thanksgiving and praise. Our cups ought to be overfilled with thanksgiving and praise uh, to the Creator and for what He's done for each one of us. And if you'll notice where this joyful heart and being filled with thanksgiving and praise, notice in verse 1 and 2, the psalmist says in verse 1, Shout joyfully to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful singing. And verse 3, or, or verse 4, go down to verse 4. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and bless His name or praise His name. And so we see the psalmist saying that the attitude, the spirit that ought to prevail in worship is joyful hearts expressing thanksgiving and praise uh, to God the Creator. You know, worship isn't something that we have to do. It's something we get to do. Worshiping God is not a burden. It is a privilege and the psalmist wrote in Psalm chapter 122 and verse 1, he said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The psalmist looked at worship as an, a joyful event, something that he anticipated. It wasn't a burden to him. To him it was joy to be able to go and praise and give thanksgiving to the one who made him. And worship is a joyful thing. It's men that make it unjoyful. And so God, in creating man, has put within us an eternal spirit that needs to worship God. God is spirit and we worship Him in spirit and in truth. And there is something that God has placed in every human being. That desire to worship. Now man doesn't always worship what is right. Or the Creator but I can guarantee you one thing. Everybody will worship something. God has designed us to worship Him. And worship isn't a burden. It is a privilege and something that we anticipate. How do you approach worship to God? Do you worship out of a sense of duty? Or do you approach the Lord with joy and gladness because... He is your God. You know, true worship isn't about religious rituals. It's about the true and genuine expression of joyful praise and thanksgiving expressed through a willing and eager heart. Like John was sharing in the Lord's Supper of that message, that willing, eager heart that expresses thank you to God. Well, worship is something that is not a sense of duty. Well, I've got to go to church. Got to go to church tomorrow. No, I get to go to church. And in that realm, it's something that we anticipate that we can joyfully express with joyful hearts, thanksgiving and praise to the Creator. And I want you to notice some psalms in, uh, along that line of this joyful praise with gladness and thanksgiving in our hearts to God. Go to Psalm chapter 9, the ninth chapter. And notice what the psalmist writes in the first two verses. In Psalm 9 verse 1, the psalmist says, I will give thanks to the Lord with all of my heart. Notice that. With all of my heart, I will tell of all thy wonders. I will be glad and, in, and exult in thee. I will sing praise to thy name. O oh my, O oh Most High. Notice that heart, that willing heart, and that joyful heart with gladness of praising God. In Psalm 104, go to the 104th chapter of Psalms, and notice in verse 33 and 34, Psalm 104, verse 33, the psalmist says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Let my meditation be pleasing to Him. And as for me, I shall be glad 
in the Lord. There's that joyful heart, gladness and willing, eager hearts. In Psalm 111, verse 1, Psalm 111, verse 1, Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all of my heart in the company of the upright and in the assembly. In the assembly of God's people, I'm going to praise God and give thanks with all of my heart, the psalmist says. In Psalm 146, the 146th chapter of the book of Psalms 146, notice in the first two verses, the psalmist says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord while I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. In other words, as long as I draw breath night and day, I'm going to praise God because of who He is. In Psalm 149, the 149th chapter, verse 1, Praise the Lord. Sing a new song. And His praise in the congregation of the godly ones or His saints, His people. And we will praise God together joyfully with joyful hearts filled with thanksgiving and praise. You know, our cups ought to be overfilled with thanksgiving and praise to God in our worship uh, to Him in the assembly together as His sons and daughters, as His sheep, as His people. Second, we should worship God because of who He is. Have you ever thought about that? Why you worship God? We should worship God because of who He is. Notice in verse 3 of Psalm 100 in our text. In verse 3, the psalmist says, Know the Lord Himself is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. The NIV uh, has in the middle of verse 3 that, uh, that uh, it is He who has made us and we are His. And if you'll have a footnote down there with a the footnote in your Bible saying, and not we ourselves. Because some manuscripts uh, have we are His and some manuscripts have and not we ourselves. Regardless of whichever manuscripts it is, it still has the same meaning. Know the Lord Himself is God. It is He who has made us. And we are His sheep. And so in that realm, we worship God because of who He is. Man is a created being. None of us are self-made or self-sufficient. We are God's creation and fully dependent upon Him. And in Psalm, the 95th chapter, the 95th chapter brings out verse 3 of knowing God that we are His people and the sheep of His pasture and worshiping God because of who He is. Notice in Psalm 95, in the first seven verses, how this parallels with verse 3 of Psalm 100. In Psalm 95, beginning in verse 1, the psalmist says, Oh, come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to Him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods in whose hand are the depths of the earth. The peaks of the mountain are His also. The sea is His for it was He who made it and His hand formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture, and the sheep of His hand. Yeah, there's that sheep and shepherd relationship again, and that joyful hearts praising God with gladness, and cups filled with thanksgiving and praise. And the reason why we worship God is because of who He is. He's the Creator. You know, Rick actually defined worship as recognizing God for who He is, recognizing yourself for who you are, and responding appropriately. 
Think about that. Recognizing God for who He is, recognizing ourselves for who we are, and responding appropriately. Worship affirms the worthiness of God and the frailty of man. It reminds us that He's the Creator, that we're cre- we are the created, and we're fully dependent upon Him. And thus we worship Him because He is God. He's the Creator and He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of all glory, honor, adoration, and praise because He is the one that has made everything in heaven and on earth. He's the Creator and we are the created. And God's placed within us an eternal spirit that can't rest, a soul that can't rest until it rests in Him and worships Him in spirit and in truth. Someone has rightfully said, we are not stroking a gigantic ego when we worship and praise God. We are simply acknowledging the truth that He's worthy of our worship, Praise, glory, adoration, and reverence. Worship is not for God's benefit. It's for our benefit. We are simply acknowledging the truth that God is the one true and living God. And when we do, that truth begins to change us from the inside out and increases our love, faith, and trust in Him. Have you noticed when we worship God with sincere hearts, overfilled with joy and praise of recognizing who He is and recognizing that we are His creation, how we worship Him in that realm with that praise and adoration that it makes us admire Him even more and love Him even more and serve Him even more? That is worship. And we really haven't worshipped if, if we leave a service And if we leave an assembly of God's people and we don't go away praising the Lord. A lot of people go away from worship and they praise and say, man, wasn't that a great worship service? Wasn't that singer great? Wasn't that preacher great? We haven't worshipped. We only worship when we leave here and say, how great are you, God? That's when we worship. That's when we connected in spirit with God, with our hearts and with our minds and with our souls. And we leave here better people when we leave praising the Creator. We worship Him because of who He is. He is God. Third, we should worship God because of what He does. What He does. Notice verse 5 of Psalm 100. The psalmist says, For the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. And His faithfulness to all generations. The psalmist says, We should worship God for what He does. Not only should we worship God because of who He is, but because what He does. For all that He has done for all that He is doing, and for all that He is about to do in my life and your life. Past, present, and future of what God has done, what He's doing, and what He's about to do in our lives as His sheep and as His children. And thus we praise Him for what He does. We joyfully and gratefully praise Him because He is so good. Isn't God good? God is so good. We sang this morning, God is so good. He's so good to me. And when we reflect upon how good God is to us, everything that we have is from God. Our physical blessings, our spiritual blessings. James 1 verse 17 says, Every good thing bestowed and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there's no variation or shifting shadow. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 says that it's God who's blessed us with everything to enjoy. And Ephesians 1, verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
Physical blessings, spiritual blessings, everything comes from God. He is so good. And I want you to notice in verse 5 again, he says the Lord is good. The Lord is good. We see that uh, throughout uh, the book of Psalms. And I want you to turn to Psalm 106. Go to chapter 106. Notice in verse 1, the psalmist says, 106 verse 1, Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. And for His loving kindness is everlasting. It starts that way in chapter 107. 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. For His loving kindness is everlasting. Psalm 118 begins with that verse and ends with that verse. Notice Psalm 118. Verse 1, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. And the last verse, verse 29, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, and for His loving kindness is everlasting. In chapter 135, I want to read the first three verses of Psalm 135. You know, this is not an exhaustive list. It just goes throughout the book of Psalms. Of praising God. Notice in verse 1 of chapter 135. The psalmist says, Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Him, O servants of the Lord. In other words, His children praise Him. You who stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises to His name, for it is lovely. Oh yeah, it's lovely to sing praises to the Lord because the Lord is so good. He's been so good to me. He's been so good to you. He's been so good to all of us. And that's why we praise Him with joyful hearts, cups that are overflowed with thanksgiving and praise that comes from that genuine expression of heartfelt worship that says, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all that I have. Thank you for this shirt on my back. Thank you for the health you blessed me with. Thank you for the mind that I have to think. Thank you for the mouth that I can praise you. Thank you for the hands that I can serve you. Thank you for my feet for I can go where you want me to go. When you stop and think, your heart can be overjoyed in praise to God if you just reflect that He is who He is. He's worthy to be worshipped because He is God. He's worthy to be worshipped because He is the one that has been so good to us. He is so good. His love endures forever. And His faithfulness is to all generations, verse 5 says in Psalm 100. He is good. His love endures forever. And His faithfulness to every generation. Every generation that has been before us and every generation that will come behind us, God will be good to. And love. And is worthy to be worshipped and praised because of who He is. Let's look at Psalm 100 again. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord Himself is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people, and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. For the Lord is good, and His loving kindness is everlasting, and His faithfulness to all generations. What a beautiful psalm. And that psalm has been recorded by the inspired spirit, by the pen of the author, for you and I to experience that worship to God. That we worship God with joyful hearts filled with thanksgiving and praise because of who He is and because of what He does. For all that He's done, for all that He's doing, and for all that He's about to do in my life and your life as His sheep. The Lord is our shepherd. I am a sheep. You are a sheep. 
And the psalmist wrote in Psalm 23 verse 1, David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's my shepherd. In chapter 63 verse 1, Oh God, You are my God. God, You are my God. You're not my mom's God, my dad's God, my grandparents' God, my wife's God, my husband's God, my son's God. You are my God. Personal relationship. The Bible says all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on Him. Because of our sins, we've all been separated from God. The Creator, that eternal Spirit that He's placed in all of us, when we sin, we're separated from God. But God loved us so much that He gave Jesus to die on the cross, His only begotten Son, so that through that precious, righteous blood of the innocent Lamb that was shed in my place and your place, we could be reconciled. We could be restored to a right relationship with Him. We could be at peace with Him and have a relationship with Him back in the flock and the fold of His people as our shepherd. And thus, we see that Jesus, when He looked upon the multitudes, Matthew 9, verse 36, verse 36 says, Seeing the multitudes, He felt compassion for them. For they were distressed or harassed. They were downcast, downtrodden like sheep without a shepherd. And that good shepherd went to the cross and died and laid down His life freely and lovingly for you and I that we could become... God's people and back in a right relationship with God as the good shepherd. Jesus says the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And God so loved every one of us. He laid down his life so that you and I would not have to die. We could spend eternity. We could enjoy while we have life and breath. As long as I live, as long as I breathe, I'm going to praise him with everything in my heart, with everything in my being, because He's been so good to me. God's been so good to us. And He is worthy. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Worthy of glory and honor and praise and adoration. We come and we bow down before Him. We humble our hearts before Him. You know, worship has the meaning of bowing down. When the wise men came and, and worshipped the Lord, they bowed down. Worship really has that of bowing down. It's not just the physical aspect of bowing down with the knees. It's prostrating in our hearts. It's bowing down in our hearts before Him because He is worthy of all praise. He is worthy of worship because of who He is and because of what He does. For all that He's done in the past for us. For all that He is doing for us in the present. And for all that He will do for us in the future. You are worthy, God, to be blessed. And so we as an assembly, we praise Him in song. We bless His name. We praise Him. And that thanksgiving leads us into thanksgiving. Of serving Him with gladness. It's not a burden to be a Christian. It is a privilege. It is a joy to be a part of God's family. I used to think before I became a Christian at the age of 22, I thought, you know, those people that go to church and go there, son, you know, what a burden. But how little did Russell know what he was missing out on of a God that loves us and wants to save us. And put us in His fold as His sheep. I am a sheep and the Lord is my shepherd. Is the Lord your shepherd? The Bible says that Jesus Himself bore our sins on the cross. So that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by His wounds you have been healed. We've returned to the guardian and the shepherd of our souls. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Have you returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your soul? Is God your God? Is He your shepherd? God wants to be your God. He wants to be your shepherd. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. He wants to save you. If you'll come to Him, 
Repent of your sins and acknowledge Him before men. Put Him on in baptism, washing away your sins. That precious, spotless, innocent blood of the Lamb was shed to wash away sins and all sins. He wants to wash away your sins. That's the Good Shepherd. If you don't have a personal relationship with God, we want to invite you to come. Start serving Him and worship Him. Fulfill the purpose of why we've all been created. The Bible says that every one of us have been created for His glory. Isaiah 43 verse 7. I've been created to glorify His name and for His glory. You've been created to glorify Him and for His glory. Today, as we offer the invitation, if we can help you in any way, uh, won't you come while we stand and while we sing? From the sunshine of love with that room farther and farther away calling today calling today Jesus is calling is tenderly calling today Jesus is pleading oh list to his voice hear him to At this time, we have an opportunity to give back a portion of what we've been blessed with so that the work of the church may be carried on. Sorry, I was a little confused there. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this message of thanksgiving. Let us always be thankful for the things that you have given us and the things that you are going to do. Please bless this now as we give back for your service. In your name we pray. Amen. announcements we have for today is there's a work day scheduled for Saturday, September 5th at the church building. We will begin working at 9 a.m. Please bring sandwiches, soup, and or dessert for lunch. Uh, this Wednesday night, we would like to invite everybody to join in a sing inspiration and devotional service of Thanksgiving and praise beginning at 7 p.m. Is there any other messages? Pardon? December 5th, not September. December 5th? Okay. <laughs> uh, we all stand while Larry comes up and gives us closing prayer. Pray with me. Dear Father, we just want to thank you for the opportunity to come together on the Lord's Day and be able to sing praises and worship you. I want to thank you for the blessings that you give us every day and that you bring upon the congregation. 
want to thank you for Russell and the lessons that he brings to us, the leadership. I want to be with the ones that are sick that you might help them get better so they can be back with us. Watch over the all those as we leave here today that we might lead lives that be pleasing in your sight and that we might make it to our destination safely. Bless the food that's been prepared and the kind hands that prepared it for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.